This is a GCSE chemistry tutorial focused on topic 6, looking at MPK fertilisers. This is a triple only topic. In this tutorial, we will look at how fertilisers promote plant growth, we'll look at how ammonia is used to produce fertilisers, and we'll have a look at both the methods used in the laboratory and in industry to produce ammonium sulphate. Our big question today is to look at how three different compounds found in fertilisers promote plant growth. In order to grow good crops, we need fertiliser. Fertilisers contain minerals which help plants to grow. They contain three key elements, nitrogen, N, potassium, K and phosphorus, P. On the side of a fertiliser, you have an NPK value on the side. This tells us the proportions of each of these chemicals in the fertiliser. For example, 15, 30, 15. This ratio is an example of a formulation which is looked at in another video. So how do these elements promote plant growth? Well, first we will look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is an essential element in the formation of amino acids and therefore in the formation of proteins. Nitrogen is also found in nitrates which promote strong growth and prevent yellow leaves. Our second element is phosphorus or P. Phosphorus is an essential element in the formation of DNA and cell membranes. Phosphates are also essential in promoting good root growth as well as preventing the discolorization of leaves. Our final element is potassium. Potassium is required in order for both photosynthesis and respiration enzymes to work correctly. Potassium ions, K plus ions, are also required in order to promote good flower growth, fruit growth, and to prevent the discolorization of leaves. There are a few different fertilisers that are widely used. The one we're going to be focusing on today is ammonium nitrate. However, we can also use ammonium phosphate, ammonium sulphate, urea and potassium nitrate. We will be focusing on the production of ammonium sulphate. This is done using ammonia. If you are unsure about ammonia, please look back at the harbour process tutorial in order to look at how this is produced. So how do we make a fertiliser? Well, most fertilisers are made by the reaction of an acid and an alkali. This is a neutralisation reaction. The fertiliser we make depends on the acid and alkali used. We tend to use ammonia as our alkali. We will look at making ammonium sulphate. This is the same way that we would make ammonium nitrate, although obviously the acid used is different. Our reaction for making ammonium sulphate is ammonia plus sulfuric acid makes ammonium sulphate. The balanced equation for this is 2NH3 plus H2SO4 goes to NH42SO4. We're going to look at two methods, one we would use in the school lab and another that we'd be able to use in industry. Why do you think there might be two different methods? The two different methods are quite different. In the lab, we carry out a titration followed by a crystallisation. The crystallisation will give pure ammonium sulphate crystals, however, it's very, very slow. In industry, we would need it in much higher concentrations, however, we'd need to evaporate the liquid in order for this to happen. A simple method for doing this in the lab is adding sulfuric acid to ammonia. This can either be done in an evaporating basin or using titration. Here is a sample method that we could use. Simply adding the sulfuric acid to the ammonia, checking it with indicator paper, evaporating it off and then filtering and drying the crystals. The crystals are our pure ammonium sulphate. In industry, this has to be done on a much bigger scale, using much higher concentrations and using very high pressure and temperature. This means that we need lots of ammonia and sulfuric acid. These need to be got from their raw materials. Nitrogen is found in the air, 
Hydrogen usually comes from natural gas sources, and sulfur we can find near volcanoes. Here are two processes, one to make ammonium nitrate and one to make ammonium sulfate. You do not need to know this overall industrial process, however it gives a good idea at how much is involved. Our air has to be processed to nitrogen and our natural gas has to be converted to hydrogen. This process number one for nitrogen is cooling and is a form of fractional distillation. Nitrogen and hydrogen react, as we've looked at previously, in the harbour process to make compound Y. Compound Y is ammonia. We can convert ammonia to nitric acid, compound X, in the Ostwald process, reacting ammonia and nitric acid to make ammonium nitrate. Alternatively, we can convert sulphur into sulphate using the contact process, which is then converted across to sulphuric acid. The reaction of ammonia and sulfuric acid will produce the salt ammonium sulfate. Both ammonium nitrate and ammonium sulfate can be used as fertilisers. The use of nitrogen containing fertilisers can lead to some ecological problems. The biggest of this is eutrophication. Eutrophication is covered in more detail in the biology topic. However, it can be brought into this topic as well. This is where nitrogen products go into a lake, causing a bloom in algae. The algae then cut off the amount of light getting through to the bottom of the lake, therefore photosynthesis from plants within the water stops. This eventually causes a dead lake, as all of the organisms in the lake run out of oxygen due to the lack of photosynthesis taking place. So far in this tutorial, we've only looked at the N part of MPK fertilisers. However, we also need to look at P, phosphorus and then phosphates, and K, potassium. So the big question is where do they come from? Well, potassium can be found in the form of potassium chloride and potassium sulphate, which can be mined and then can be processed into potassium. Phosphate rock can also be mined. However, because the phosphate salts in the rock are insoluble, plants can't directly use them as nutrients. Therefore, we need to convert them into soluble phosphates. In order to make our soluble phosphate, we can react the phosphate rock with a number of different acids. First, we can react it with nitric acid to produce phosphoric acid and calcium nitrate. We can also add sulfuric acid. Doing so produces calcium sulfate and calcium phosphate. This mixture is known as a single superphosphate. Finally, we can react it with phosphoric acid, which produces calcium phosphate. This is known as a triple superphosphate. Here are two sample examination style questions. The first one, our big question for this tutorial, is how three different compounds found in fertilisers promote plant growth. Our second one, which is a bit more of a challenge question, is to describe and compare the production of ammonium sulphate within a lab and within industry. I'm going to pause the video now and attempt these two questions. So, for our first question, which we were looking at the three different compounds, fertilisers often contain nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These fertilisers are called MPK fertilisers. Nitrate ions, NO3, are used to tackle poor growth and yellow leaves. Amino acids contain nitrogen, which are the building blocks of protein. Phosphate ions, PO4, are used to tackle poor root growth and discoloured leaves. Phosphorus is a component of DNA molecules and cell membranes. Potassium ions, K+, are used to tackle poor flower and fruit growth, as well as any discolorization in leaves. Finally, potassium must be present for photosynthesis and respiration enzymes to work. I want you to give yourself a mark out of four for this question. Secondly, for our challenge, in the lab, ammonium sulphate is produced from ammonia solution and dilute sulfuric acid. This is done on a small scale using crystallisation. In industry, ammonia solution and sulfuric acid are produced from their raw materials and ammonium sulphate is produced on a much larger scale that takes much more energy. 
As MPK fertilisers are quite a small topic, it is highly likely that in the examinations, the exam board will combine it into either the harbour process or the environmental effects topics.